Conrado Dobler. I'm a Belgian artist, uh, born, raised and based in Brussels, a European capital. For this exhibition, uh, I tried to create a suite of three new works, especially created for the environment, the context and the space of uh, the Tank Museum, and uh, actually trying to, to grasp somehow what the, the, the China's way of production uh, is. So it's the first time I've, I've been in China, so I've it's a sort of a, a way or a means to discover how the wheelings and dealings of the production in this country work. In this case, actually, there's, there's not really household objects in use, so it's, it, it is something that, it, that, that would fit or, it, yeah, that somehow comes back in, in other works, but in this this specific case, it's not really a topic. Uh, there's a few details of uh, things that I brought from, from Belgium. Uh, so there's uh, plastic flowers that are actually made in China, but bought in IKEA in Belgium. So there's, I wanted to bring back objects that are produced here, but that are acquired in Europe or United States or anywhere else in the world. So there's this uh, apparently if if my my recollections of the the percentages are right china produces about like 60% of all objects in the world and i thought that some somehow china is everywhere and it's about these this that sort of presence that i wanted to bring back to to the origins or somehow if there would be origins for these objects So basically the ground floor is, is, is a public space or kind of a prolongation of the public square which is outside of the building. And we can't really say that these are exhibition spaces. So we're in an, an in-between space which somehow are spaces that tempt me a lot or that do pose a lot of questions like what is the status of an object or an intervention in those spaces. And, not entirely making a clear statement is something that, that interests me in the sense that you're not quite sure if they might be forgotten or if they somehow could be part of the architecture, that they, they play this in-between status, that they jump on, on one and then the other leg at the same time. The thing with humor is that it's, um, maybe it's non-verbal, although there might be a word choke. Uh, so it's, it's virtually impossible to talk about it. it. You can't explain a joke either. Once you explain it, it's no joke anymore. And it's not that these things or my interest is, I'm not a joker, I'm, I'm not a stand-up comedian either. So humor is, is maybe the thing which is impossible to talk about and there's there's I've had this question uh, a couple of times before and and I think and I'll tell an, an anecdote as an answer to to the question there's um, Samuel Beckett made a film one of his later f uh, not later films but somewhere mid 50s if, if I'm correct and he made it with uh, uh, Buster Keaton as principal actor and he was very excited to meet Keaton, and but the meeting was a disaster. Uh, Keaton was also older. Uh, he was nobody knew who he was anymore. So he he was a star on his return, and he would only watch basketball or baseball. I, there I have to lie. I don't remember exactly. And so, yeah, Beckett asked him that, but, but what's the thing you're you're not the person I thought you would be. And, and Keaton said, well, nobody ever told you that making a joke is hard work. And somehow that summarizes maybe a position to, towards humor that it is, it is work. And, it's, and once you reveal how it works and what it's supposed to do, well, it doesn't do it anymore.